yeah, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to another hot episode of a very special podcast. This is the podcast in which you talk about all of your favorite TV series from yesteryear, and then discuss them over a warm mug of coffee. I'm your boy, Patrick M. Dunn, and I'm joined here, as always, by my holiday maven, Kat Halstead, the author. Uga, welcome back, girl. Welcome back for a surprise bonus app question mark I, d- why did you have to say it like we could have just slid this in nobody would have known oh all right we, we, we'll take it out in post how about that uh bruce the intern yep. take that take that part out in post you won't do it you won't you never do all right i hope you're enjoying our holly jolly jamboree a uh, great great apps that we've dropped right yeah the holly jolly jamboree i don't know what just happened i'm just gonna blame it on the sugar plum Macchiato. Hey, Bruce, the intern, do you think you could um, put some uh, music behind that, kind of like Conspiracy Corner style, and we'll make it the new uh, sound drop for our holidays? Oh my gosh. So if you listen to, I don't know, the last like six years of the podcast, every month in December, we dip into the Christmas vault. We do like, you know, a classic movie, maybe an old episode of a TV series that you love, or an animated special, mm-hmm. I don't know, a music video. Have you ever done a Christmas music video? I feel like we did, but I just might be making that up in my head. No, we haven't. Add that to the list, Kat. Add that to the list for 2021. Uh, oh, okay. Let me just add it to our massive list that Bruce the intern should be taken care of, but he hasn't been taken care of. Uh, You know what? He's not good with a pen and a pad. I feel like you're better with a pen and a pad. You get your... uh. Your planners and your stickers Ugh. and your, I don't know, glitter gun. Is that a thing? A glitter gun? A glitter gun. All right. So what are we doing today in honor of the holidays? Today we decided to do something a little bit different. Um, We kind of realized we were kind of maybe forgetting something or just we perhaps don't really have the experience with this. Um, And there aren't very many episodes that dive into this or specials about Hanukkah. Yeah, you know, we decided that we wanted to dip dip into this world. And um, so like we, we brought up a list, we brought up like a hot list of Hanukkah related TV episodes. And I don't know, we just this one just caught our attention for some reason. I don't know why I think I brought it up. And you're like, yes, let's do that one. I think I was ex- I think I expected a little more than what we got. I don't know why. Uh, uh, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. So we just, what did we decide to do? What did we uh, narrow down? Well, I feel like our list really only contained like two things. I had like a 10 things that I said to you. No, you sent me like two. Oh, well, oh, all right. I looked at a list of like 10 things and then I think I sent you, you two. That... You looked at a list, but then you only sent me two. So it was kind of like... Well, there was like, uh, there, there was a few things that I might consider doing. And then there was just like... One thing we've actually already done, believe it or not. There was one thing we did, and I really wouldn't call it a Hanukkah episode. It was kind of a hybrid. It was uh, the first uh, Christmas episode of the OC. Oh, oh, I totally forgot we did that. Yeah, I I don't know if that counts. uh, I can't remember. It's been a while since I've seen it. I don't remember our I mean, to be fair, I'd have to even listen to our episode because I totally forgot we did it. I think we were going to do it like a Christmas episode every year, too, and I think we just didn't. Uh, You know what? After going back to uh, Mercy Cooper dies, I, I feel like we've dried up the OC well. There, there's only so much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, unless like we get crazy, we decide to do like an Oliver episode. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe in, like three years, maybe we'll revisit it. Fucking Oliver. Looking back at this now, like it's been a while since I've seen an Oliver episode. I have a feeling that like I might actually like him this time around. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I I get Oliver. Oh God, maybe. You know, Oliver, you're surrounded by all these rich pricks. Don't care about you, and you're just trying to live in this world, and they just shut you down, and I don't know. You grab a gun? He, he grabs a gun at some point, right? I feel like that's what happens. I think so. I don't remember. He, uh, it has been, like, I have never really done, like, an OC rewatch. I did, and you know what? I got as far as, as soon as Oliver got introduced, I was like, I'm out. So you got, like, five episodes in? No, nah, he's, he comes in, like, episode, like, 13 or something. Oh, yeah, you get to, like, Tijuana. No, the first episode he makes appearance in is the episode that we did, the Christmas cut episode. He appears at the very end, because, uh... Oh, really? Uh, yeah, Marissa, you know, she shoplifts, she steals, like a, like, a makeup kit, and then her mom sends her to, um, therapy. Oh, yeah. And then she bumps into Oliver in the, um, in the waiting room. I remember that, because I remember you were... She's like shook. You were shook to the core that Oliver was in the episode that we watched. You're like, I forgot Oliver was going to be in this. Fucking Oliver. <laughs> All right. Worst Oliver ever. Oliver from the OC or Cousin Oliver from the Brady Bunch? Which one ruined your childhood and your adulthood? 
in every other hood. I don't know. How old were we when the OC came out? I feel like we were old. Dude, we were in college. Something like that. We were like 22-ish, right? I feel like, maybe. Yeah, we were... Yeah. We were, uh, we were way past the demographic they were going for. That's all I gotta say. Oh, look, that's a hard one, man. Do you want to phone a friend? Do you want to phone a friend? Or use a 50-50? <laughs> or uh, pull the audience? <laughs> pull the audience. I think... Overall, I have to go with Cousin Oliver is worse. Yeah, he's got like, I don't know, nearly 50 years of anguish against him and Mm -hmm. regular Oliver. I don't know what to call him. Just Oliver. He's only been on the the, um, scene for like 20 years. I mean, to be fair, they realized the mistake quickly with Oliver and wrote his ass out as soon as they could. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, he's in what, like four episodes maybe? Tops? We can't judge that stuff because we could have sworn Matthew Perry did like 20 episodes of Growing Pains and it was like four. If even that, like he's like only like the focal point of one episode and then he's... He just, like, walks the door and, like, um, shakes Maggie's and Jason's hands. And... It's, like, alluded to that maybe he and Carol might be having sex or something. Oh, uh, really? I think so. I don't. See? Who knows? Maybe? I don't know. Was it a very special episode? Is there a very, like, nerve-wracking scene where um, Jason, the doctor, you know, he's he takes the banana and a condom and he shows um, Sandy how to put it on? Dude, no, because it was the 80s. It was the 80s. I don't know. I, I feel like sometimes I got bold in the 80s every now and then. Well, you know the reason they killed off Sandy was they wanted um to kill off a character that the audience had connected with. Yeah, they got three hot weeks of Sandy broken over like weeks at a time. They wanted it to be a character that like the audience knew and cared about. Because Carol cared cared about him, you know. You know what? He probably got mentioned a lot more than we've seen him. Yeah, that's probably why we thought he was in more episodes. Carol, like, comes in the kitchen. It's, like, breakfast time. And, like, you hear a car beeping outside. Yeah. And they're like, who's that? And she's like, oh, it's it's Sandy. And he's like, oh, why can't he come in? And like, oh, you know, he has a um, trigonometry test. So he doesn't have time to get out. He wants to go study with his friends real quick. Mm-hmm. And then you see her run out the door. She grabs her little, like, lunch sack and kisses the mom goodbye, maybe. And then, I don't know, Boner says a joke. Ugh, I feel like he's, he's here in the morning for some reason. All right. But enough about growing pains and the Olivers of the world. <laughs> we're here for something more more important. We're here to talk. We never even said the name of the episode that we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know what the show we're doing. All right. What are we doing, Kat? Said. We are doing... A Disney show. Yes. Um, it is a well-known show. The cast, there are several members of the cast who are very well-known. Besides the main star? Yes. <laughs> I've never seen these other people in my life, but we'll get to it. We'll, take me through the cast. Oh my god. Um, um, one, you're getting a bunch of YouTube links later. All right. Ooh, can't wait. Um, we're doing Even Stevens. A heck of a Hanukkah. Yes. Season one, episode 15, aired on December 1st, the year 2000. The year 2000. In the year 2000. It was a brave new world. Actually, it was a brave old world. We were expecting flying cars and, I don't know, jets and buildings, but we got none of that. We we were promised a Y2K bug. We didn't even get that. Never came. We were told there would be an apocalypse. All we got was, I don't know, the season, the series finale of Nano 210 in this episode of Even Stevens. and I mean, this is the year we graduated high school. That is true. That is true. So there is some comeuppances that year. So shout out to the year 2000. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so the series stars uh, Shia LaBeouf, who you may know from the movie Holes or Transformers. Or from his internet freakouts. Yeah, the internet freakouts or that like weird meme he did where he like watched all of his movies on YouTube. Yeah. Like a live stream on YouTube. And he was like there for like. Three days, I think. Oh, he is not a well man. <laughs> Before he was not a well man, he was a baby face. How old is he in this? Like thirteen? I don't. I don't really know his age in this. I would say he's like he's supposed to be a seventh grader, so I put him at like twelve. Okay. And uh, I just learned this like five minutes before we started recording. Shia LaBeouf got his career as a stand-up comic at the age of ten years old. Did you know this? Who's gonna get? 10 year old into a comedy club he was not just like a regular stand-up comic he was a disgustingly dirty man and he they he was coded as as having a 50 year old mouth for a 10 year old child like whoa i need to find some like old clips of this yeah he found his agent through the yellow pages after he found like a random agent called him up pretended to be his own agent (laughs) you mean his own manager his own manager and then got an agent (laughs) so i don't know always scheming so hold on he was born in 1986, so he would have been a stand-up comedy in 1996. That is insane. I don't know. I was doing, like, math homework, probably, and maybe, like, reading, like, Of Mice and Men yeah. while he was doing stand-up comedy. That's insane. Try to put that in perspective. So, normally, we do, uh, um, 
a this night of television, but we just kind of decided to do this episode like last minute, so I didn't have time to put one together. So instead, we're gonna do Cat goes through the cast of Even Stevens, and she tells me who all these other stars are because mm-hmm. I've never seen any of these other people in my life. Yes, you have, and you're gonna feel like an idiot when you realize it. Blow me away. Okay, our main cast is the Stevens family. Okay. So you have Shia LaBeouf, who plays Louis Stevens, the youngest of the three kids. Yeah, the, he's kind of like the um, the wisecracker, prank-playing type kid. Wacky shenanigans. Class clown, always looking for attention. Dennis the Menace, Randy Taylor type. Yes. Then we have um, Christy Carlson Romano, who plays Ren Stevens, the middle child, the only daughter. She's also known as the voice of Kim Possible on the Disney Channel. Is that the shocker cast member that I should know? Because I'm like, I don't know that. She's done like a ton of other stuff. She's done some voiceover work. She did a few different Disney movies, of course. And then she was also on Broadway where she played Belle. I don't know where, Duck If. I, I'm just disgusted with you right now. You literally just said Kim Possible and a bunch of stuff, but you never said a name of anything. So I was like, uh. Like, if you are a Disney Channel fan, you know Christy Carlson Romano. She does a YouTube channel now where, like, Christy's Throwback Kitchen, where she gets together with, like, other people from the late 90s and 2000s, and they make, like, they do, like, cooking and stuff. In the kitchen with Christy? Her Throwback Kitchen. Like, I just told you what the show was. I was trying to relate it to your uh, YouTube show. Sorry. No. Oh, uh, hold on. Uh, who has she gotten into the kitchen with her? Oh, uh, she got Will Friedle. Okay. Ooh, okay. That's a catch. I mean, he was Ron Stoppable on Kim Possible. I want to throw this up there. I have no idea what Kim Possible is. I, like, have zero... If you put the character in front of me, I'd be like, I don't know who that is. Is it a Powder Puff girl? And it's not Powder Puff, it's Power Puff. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god, I can't... Kim Possible is a teenage spy. Oh, really? She's like a spy kid? <laughs> Later today, you need to go on to Disney Plus and watch the Kim Possible cartoon. Did you open a can of worms if I, if I invited me to do that? Probably. I'm going to get weird messages now. Oh, I can't wait. Um, then there is Nick Spano, who plays the older brother, Donnie. I have a question about Donnie. Yeah. How old is Donnie supposed to be? Because I feel like he's like a 25-year-old man in this for some reason. Here's the thing. The actor who played Donnie was older than the age he was hired to play. He was, like, he popped up in a lot of places in the 90s, like a step-by-step episode, Melrose Place, um, Sister Sister, Seventh Heaven, Saved by the Bell, The New Class. Which, Peacock, why is that not on your service? You have that shitty new Saved by the Bell, but you can't give me Saved by the Bell, the new class. You know what? Maybe they're worried about putting something on that just, like, has Dustin Diamond as, like, one of the main leads. (laughs) Maybe they're nervous about that. Just put a a freaking beach ball in front of his face. Nobody will know. Ooh, good idea. You know what? You should be a a VP at Peacock. Okay, and then um, the dad is played by Tom Virtue. He has been acting since 82. Oh, I know that name. Tom Virtue. Yeah. Yeah. I think we talked about him before for some reason. I feel like I had him in my in my notes from like 18 episodes ago. He was on some Roseanne, some New Hearts. He, he's nurses. He's one of those guys who popped up a lot, like in small roles. Hold on. I'm bringing up his... Uh... He was in the Christmas episode of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air as a forest ranger. Okay. I think I know him. Hold on. I'm bringing up the uh, I'm bringing up his IMDb because I feel like uh, <laughs> now that you said his name, because I was kind of having like a, I know that guy, but I didn't go any further than that. Yeah. No, you're going to see, like, if you look, he was on The X-Files. He was on Party of Five. Dharma and Greg, The Secret World of Alex Mack, a bunch of, like, Disney movie things. Oh, you know what I know him from? He's uh, Eddie on the comeback with um, Lisa Kudrow, like the uh, OG season. Okay. I think that's, like, where I primarily knew him from. Oh, okay. He was uh, Allie McBale's father on the um, Allie McBale pilot. (laughs) Oh. Uh, Yeah, he's got a wild filmography. He's got the hottest filmography I've ever seen. He's, like... A steadily working actor. Like, he okay. he was just in two episodes of uh, This Is Us. Uh, he did Dirty John. He's been in various seasons of American Horror Story. So, you know, he's you know, and he's probably got, like, a decent house in Encino, maybe. He's got a nice pad. He's one of those guys who works a lot. They might be small roles, but he's working. 
And he's not worried about losing his SAG insurance. Oh uh, yeah, he's got the good insurance. He's got like the um, like the gold plan, the gold like PPO. Mm-hmm. He gets like I don't know, like a ten dollar copay at his doctor's office. I don't know, free plastic surgery, like one one touch up a year or something. All right, the next one. If you don't know who this person is, I I'm gonna have to walk away. Donna Pascal, who played Eileen Stevens. You may know her from her stint on General Hospital as Gertrude Morgan, or perhaps you know her as the mom on Out of This World. Whoa! I did not connect those two dots. But you know what? I see it now, though. Now I see Stephanie Pascal as the quirky mom from Out of This World. Donna Pascal. Of what I call her? Stephanie. Is there a Stephanie Pascal? That name sounds very familiar for some reason. I have no idea. Sorry. Um, but your brain works really weird. <laughs> Sorry, Donna Pascal. Now, that that's the fam. Is there any, like, friends? Because like, there's no friends in this episode. There are some friends. They're not in this episode, though. I'm going to throw this out there. This is the first time I've ever watched Even Stevens. Like, I've never seen an episode. Really? You've never watched Even Stevens before? No. Why would I watch this in the year 2000? Like, I was, like, knee-deep in, I don't know, Party of Five and... 90210 at this point. I'm still watching the X-Files. Like, why would I why would I go back and watch a show that, like, my, like, 10-year-old sister at the time was watching? I remember watching it. I'm trying to remember when I started watching this. I think I probably started watching it, like, a year later or so when my family moved to Salida. Okay. And we had, like, only 20 cable channels. And one of them was a Disney channel. One of them was Disney, and, like, the, there were, like, three news channels and, like... There wasn't that much to watch. <laughs> For some reason, I'm like, my vision of this is the Bundys trying to watch Fox. Like, you guys all got to, like, stand in a certain spot and put tinfoil on your head and stuff. And, <laughs> I don't know, wave your arms to get a clear signal. No, yeah, it was back, like... But I know that's not how cable works. It was like, here is your cable split line split into five, so you're going to get the blurry... Degrades. ...stations, cat. Yeah. Um, that, that was before uh, people realized that you had to just do, like, a straight line, like, run a straight line to the outlet. Yeah. Because, you know, if it, we didn't have cable internet. I think cable internet was, like, where re- digital cable was really started to... Uh... I remember we had, like, a radio signal for internet. <laughs> what? What kind of Lost Island world do you live in? It was a really small Colorado town. This is the best part. So, like... The tower that would do the um, signal for the internet was, like, on the top of, like, the mountain. But at Christmas time, they do the mountain up to look like a Christmas tree in lights. And um, the lights would interfere with the internet signal. So the internet would always go out for, like, four or five hours at night. At night. Oh, uh, they would shut the lights off at midnight or something, so you'd have to, like, wait to midnight to... It's like, 10 o'clock or something, and then you'd get internet back, like, five minutes later. You'd have to wait until, like, really late at night to um, read your Yahoo emails or your Hotmails or whatever you, whatever you had. No, it was Hotmail at this point. Katie did 545 at Hotmail.com. <laughs> God, I don't even know what my old emails were anymore. So, was this internet radio, was it AM or FM? I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, like, some kind of, like, signal. But, like, it, was, it wasn't it was even that great of an internet, even when it worked, you know? Could you get the internet on your clock radio? You know what? You're being an asshole right now. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just I've never heard of this, so I'm just, I have so many questions. Listen, all I know is it was, like, the highest speed internet you could get. At the time. You know what? I'm, this is going to be my um, homework today. I'm going to look up uh, radio internet. I'll get back to you on it. We'll do a hot um, Patreon episode about radio internet. The history. So was it Blazing Speeds? Like, could you uh, stream episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer at the time? No, because it's 2002, dude. I don't know. I used to get, I used to do like real media streams of like, um, I don't know, WB shows because that's what I did for some reason. I'd watch them on like the real media player on a like a telephone modem and it would... Literally play for like 10 seconds and then buffer for 30 seconds and then play for 10 seconds and buffer for 30 seconds. And I would watch like entire episodes of like Angel that way. I don't know why. Oh my God. It's the only way to watch it like middle of the night because you didn't have a DVR. Mm -hmm. You know, you forgot to set your VCR because, you know, there was hot competition. You only had one VCR. You wanted to watch Nano 20 that night. You didn't get a chance to watch Angel. So you'd have to wait. You'd have to wait till someone uploaded it to the internet and you'd watch it on the RMP. God. At my blazing 56... I don't know, megabytes per second speed. Yeah. And then God forbid, God forbid you got kicked off the internet because then you have to start all over because there wasn't no, like, you could just drag the bar to where you left off. No, that's true. Didn't work that way. If you were 40 minutes into an episode, you only had three minutes left. You're fucked. You just have to read the updates on uh, 
tvwithoutpity.com. Mm-hmm. All right. You ready to get into the world of the Stevens family and how they celebrate the holidays in December of 2000? Yes. Hold on. We have to bring up. So this is like a, um, a mixed faith family. So the mom is Jewish. Yes. And the dad is Christian, some sort of Christian offshoot. Yes. It's never like explained what kind. It doesn't really matter. We just know they celebrate Christmas too. Yes. Like Hanukkah is always like a different, it's a different eight night span every year it's not always the same yeah it's not the same eight nights every year there's time like we're hitting christmas crosses paths and there was a few years ago it was on thanksgiving not gonna happen again until like after we're dead do you know like the official layout of it like does it come like a certain number of days into the month or no i don't i think someone if anyone knows it send us a hot message of hot works because i'm not sure yeah we're not very so the family's um mixed faith they celebrate both and this year I guess Hanukkah just happens to be like a week before Christmas or, or a few weeks before. I don't know. It's sometime before Christmas. Yeah, it's a little bit before Christmas. Um, it's like the first night of Hanukkah. I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's the first night because they haven't gotten any presents yet. Well, it's like the daytime. It's like the... It's like early in the morning, I think. It's and It's not even early in the morning. It's The sun is up. That's all we know. Earlier in the day, but like... Lewis is doing what every kid does when there's an event coming up and there's presents involved. He wants to find them. And we're at the point where his older siblings just, they're like, dude, knock it off. We're going to get them in like six hours. But um, Louis Stevens goes balls to the wall with this. He has this like helmet on that has like a visor that lets him see things Terminator style. Well, you know what it is? He has um flash their little flashlights. Their little like magna lights. So that he can illuminate like the crawl space above Ren's room. They do that thing though that they do on like Terminator 2 where um you see like first person perspective and it's that uh like it's like rose colored vision. Uh, I don't know, there's like a little target in the middle and it, fo- it it focuses on like a treasure chest and then all these little like coordinates pop up on the screen it's making these little like beeping noises and then a little like mm-hmm. message pops up that says like I don't know 10% chance of presence being there or something yeah it cuts to like fast motion photography which that really took me out of this world for some reason I don't know but you told me this was like a recurring gag on the show or something yeah they they do it in every episode like I didn't even notice it really because I have watched this show their uh, series finale, the Even Stevens movie, is one of my favorite decoms ever. That was a decom? That wasn't in theaters? Yeah, it was a decom. Oh, I thought it was in theaters. I kind of like remember being in theaters at some point, though. Lizzie uh-huh. McGuire got the movie in theaters. Okay. All right. So the Disney uh, thing is every one of their sitcoms gets like about 65 episodes which is about three seasons, and then a wrap-up movie. If you're lucky. They don't always get a wrap-up movie. Disney, where's my Girl Meets World movie then? Huh? 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 I think the only thing that ever broke that mold was That's So Raven, right? That had, like, more than three seasons? Hannah Montana. Hannah Montana? Okay. All right, it broke the mold. I don't know. You know what? The, the Cyruses, the Ray Cyruses, they got some kind of, like, hold over the mouse. I don't know. Maybe they have, like, Stevie Picks or something. Well, um, like, Girl Meets World had 72 episodes, but it still only had three seasons. How many episodes does Hannah Montana have? Hannah Montana had four seasons and 98 episodes. Cause, and the movie came in the middle of that show. And then they did the tour at the end, maybe? No, they did tour a tour early on. I, I told you how it was, like, 2013 when I realized that Hannah Montana and Miley Cyrus were the same person, right? Yeah. Like, I thought Hannah Montana was, like, a part, like an actual human being that existed in our real world. Might have been, like, when, whenever Party in the USA came out, I think that's when I figured it out. I put it all together. I was like, you know, those two girls look the same. I don't know, they're just interchangeable to me. And someone's like, yeah, because they are the same person. So, like, Hannah Montana is a character that Miley Cyrus plays. I was like, what? Oh, my gosh. Um, The only thing is uh, The Sweet Life and The Sweet Life on Deck. Both had three seasons. But they were technically two series, right? They were technically two series, but they still had the same, like, four main cast members. All right, so the, the first series, they, they lived and worked in a posh hotel. And then the, the second series, they were on, like, a cruise ship. <laughs> was that the... Yeah. Was the parents there? Did the parent or the mom go? In? Not on the cruise ship. The actress had enough. She couldn't, You know, she thought she was going to be the star of the show. And... Dude, okay, the reason I watched The Sweet Life in the first place is because Kim Rhodes played the mom. And I loved Kim Rhodes as Cindy on Another World. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I just realized that was Cindy. Yeah. Okay. You know what? Worlds are collided. What show is Allie and AJ on? So, they 
did a TV movie on Disney together. Oh, oh, this was like around the time that the High School Musical was big, so they just started focusing on like movies. Yeah. Okay. So, well, here's the funny thing: is um that they did this movie called um God, I don't even know. I'm trying to find what it's called. Because it was just so so ridiculous. Um, they had to go work at like a dairy farm or something. Uh, was it like inspired by the Simple Life? Maybe. Maybe. Um. So Allie was on a show called Phil of the Future. Oh yeah 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 okay. Yeah, it was Phil of the Future. It was a fun little series. It only had two seasons on Disney though, and only forty three episodes. It didn't do too hot. It must have been trouble on the set. <laughs> And then AJ, the sister, you're going to know her from the Goldbergs and Schooled. I'm still sad about Schooled being canceled. Ugh. Oh, it's called Cowbells. Cowbells. Like, but Bells, like B-E-L-L-E-S? Yes. Oh, I love it. <laughs> you know what? Whoever came, like the person who came up with that name was like, I got an idea, guys. Cowbells, but B-E-L-L-E-S. And everyone in the room's like, whoa. Now, here's the fun. There's a story. There's a story about this is that, you know how networks have, like, their things with, like, the press and stuff, and they try to, like, hype up certain things? Disney was, like, sure that Cowbells was going to be, like, their hit. They were, like, sure it was going to be their hit. Then they had this little movie called High School Musical that they didn't think too much about. They were just like, we're just going to toss it on in January. It's going to be whatever. You know, it's it's a musical. The kids aren't really going to dig it. And then High School Musical fucking exploded. That just shows that uh, these suits, they have no idea. They have no idea what the kids are going to bite. Well, I think because if you look at it, um, Cowbells had established stars in a sense already. Because they already had Allie on Phil of the Future. They had the girls doing music for their movies and stuff. Radio Disney and all that jazz. Yeah. And then they had, like, this little unknown, like, group of kids in this movie that they're like, yeah, we'll just toss it on. We'll, we'll do this. This, this, it'll be a cute movie. It'll, you know, it'll do okay. We can toss some of the songs on Radio Disney. And then... We'll put it on in the January doldrums. High School Musical became this insane hit. And phenomenon. There's sequels, there's tours, there's theatrical releases, there's High School, the musical, the series. Is that the official name of it? <laughs> no, it's High School Musical, the musical, the series. High School Musical, the musical, the series. What a, what a mouthful. Yeah, I, but you know what? Not gonna lie. If, you know, I'm flipping through the channels and High School Musical comes on, I'll, I'll watch it. What are you flipping? <laughs> You're still flipping through channels? <laughs> no, but if I was. All right. Let's go into the world of the Stevens family. We've been talking about cowbells for like an hour. Add it to the list, though. We'll do it next year. Louis is trying to find the presents, and Ren and Donnie are kind of like, dude, knock it off. Like, aren't you like too old for this shit now, you know? Here's the thing, is Ren is like your straight-A student, high achiever. Donnie is like the great athlete, state recognition and all that stuff. Like, he's probably going to get a scholarship to a good university. Ren will probably get like an academic scholarship and Lewis is going to be the kid living in his parents' basement for the next 30 years while he tries to break out as a stand-up comedian. Yeah, maybe get, I mean, he works at like, security at the mall or something. Yeah. He gets to, I don't know, guard Claire's from being robbed by a gang of Roman teens. Yeah. We're trying to steal like $10 necklaces. You know, Lewis is looking and he's trying, like he's in Ren's room trying to get to a crawl space and she's like, get out of here. It's like, why would they use that space? Like, come on, do you think? Yeah, it's like the um, like the diehard crawl space, like in their house, they have like a diehard crawl space. Like, she's just like, dude, go away. She's just like, stop. You're you're being ridiculous. Eventually, uh, Lewis ends up in the basement and he's looking around and he's not seeing spots. And there's a chunk that says that has a note on it. This is Lewis. Please clean this out. Oh, yeah. Because it's like a deterrent. <laughs> he's like, I'm not going to touch them. And then he's like, he starts to walk away and he's like, wait a minute. I w like, he's like, there's a chance. And he opens it and it's all their presents wrapped. It's got the like treasure glow that you get in movies when they find the gold and stuff so he takes everything and he sneaks upstairs 
and he's in his room, and he pulls the covers over his head, and he starts unwrapping everything. Not just the stuff for him. He unwraps the stuff for Ben and Donnie as well. Did you freeze frame to look, and look at the gifts? I didn't. Uh, it was great, I don't know, like late 90s, early 2000s gadgets. Like something you would buy at, like, I don't know, like maybe Spencer gifts. Like, uh, like a cool uh, CD player, clock radio. There were some like cool speakers in there. There were giants. Oh, it was great. I loved it. I couldn't see everything, but it was just... It was like they literally just went to, like, Spencer Gifts and just f- found, like, the coolest looking aesthetic for 2000s television and just, like, threw it in this... That's probably what they did. And have Shia LaBeouf stared in awe. And he's, like, under his covers. It's like, um, you know, like, when, like, a kid, like, reading <laughs> at night, he's supposed to be asleep. He has, like, the flashlight <laughs> reading, um, I don't know, Indian in the Cupboard. Lewis has found the presents. He's, like, super excited. He's under the covers. And, um... His parent, his dad's like coming up to talk to him, and he freaks out. Did he get in trouble or something earlier? Like, was there a? I I think he was like driving the other siblings crazy later. So the dad's just checking in on him about the whole like looking for the presents. Did he give him a pep talk? Yeah, be like, dude, you know, it's it's just a few more hours. You can handle it. Probably like the you know you're at that age now where you know you shouldn't be crawling through the vents. <laughs> you got dust everywhere. Yeah, like <laughs> dust plume got all over our um. Latkes. Oh, I would have been in hell since I'm allergic to dust. You know, I think uh, there was like a part I think where he like, I think he might be the he might have been in the attic or the basement or something, and he like blew something, and then they showed like dust come up, and I I think I got sick like watching that. I think like I felt my nose clog up. I could feel my nose getting congested just the thought of it. So Lewis takes all the presents, he wraps them in a sheet. And he tries to hide it, and he's doing the, like, running around the room, and there's no place to hide it, because he's just got, like, dirty clothes piles and crap everywhere. Uh, what about his closet? <laughs> Did you look at his closet? Yeah, his closet was, like, stuff. Like, you literally could, there was, it was just stuff with, like, dirty clothes. Like, does nobody do the laundry? Has nobody noticed this kid is always in need of new clothes because his laundry never gets done? Yeah. Uh, can we, can we talk about his, um, his posters in his room too yes oh my god it's just like they just went on the internet and just printed out random pictures to like hang on the wall because there was a drew carey headshot a Whoopi goldberg headshot they tried to find like comedians or, or you know he had the kramer post like you know like the painting of kramer from seinfeld yes i know it well i have it in my living room like that's the first thing i saw and then i was like what is that to the right of his shoulder and i like zo- like zoomed in and i was like oh my god it's drew carey i'm like why is drew carey yeah on his wall and then i was like what's that Whoopi goldberg's like 1997 headshot right there like when she's doing i don't know maybe she's performing at a comedy club and that's like the poster they have up front <laughs> you know what do you think that was like shyest input he's like you know like they probably hung up like um bands that they thought he might have been into at the time i don't know like they might be giants or something no i think um it works for the character of lewis for it to be comedians because he's the class clown okay Ooh, i love it yeah so there's nowhere in the room for him to stash like all the goodies he just like unwrapped not only did he find them, he unwrapped everything, and he didn't just unwrap his stuff, he unwrapped the stuff for Ren and Donnie, which is just a dick move. Well, maybe they weren't labeled yet. Uh, well, I mean, I guess they would fatten them. Maybe. Well, I feel like they have to be labeled in some way. There's probably, like, a code the parents had for, like, wrapping or something. Like, Ren gets the silver snowflake paper, Donnie gets the, like, blue stripes, and Lewis gets the dreidels or something, you know what I mean? So, um, um, Lewis opens the, his bedroom window, and he, like, puts the presents on the roof, but he's, like, got part of the blanket still in the house with the window closed on top of it, and he's trying to hold it up, but trying to, like, do it discreetly so they don't, like, fall, and the dad's talking to him, and Lewis is, like, uh uh-huh, uh, okay, Dad, yeah, sure, sure, whatever you say, Dad, whatever you say. Like, whatever, like, Lewis really isn't even paying attention. He's worried about the presents. He's worried about his cool late 90s tech. And then he, like, loses the grip, and the dad's leaving, and Lewis thinks maybe he can catch it, and he can't, and everything tumbles off the roof and crashes. And then Ren and Donnie look at, out the window, and they're like, what is this pile of stuff outside? And the parents are like, the Hanukkah presents. Lewis, you're grounded for Hanukkah. We get this like um like living room scene where the whole family's in there and they're like, I can't believe you've gone to this drastic measure, Lewis, kind of kind of situation. Like you're too old for this. They blame him for ruining the holiday. He gets banished to his room and he's I don't know he's up there like looking in the mirror and he's like, I wish I was never born, <sighs> kind of thing. 
And then outside the window, I see this little like orb float in. It's the, I don't know, the spirit of his great, 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 great grandmother. Uh, You've gotten like five greats too many. It was a lot of greats. <laughs> this is a lot of greats. Yeah, it's his booby rose. It then flips into like, it's a wonderful life scenario where all of a sudden, Bubby Rose takes... Lewis to a world where he does not exist. Instead, they have like another son, a better son. Curtis. Yeah, Curtis. That was his name. He wears like, I don't know, like a knitted sweater, well coiffed hair. He doesn't have this like shaggy Shia LaBeouf do. The siblings are like different in this world. Uh, Ren is kind of a biker chick, maybe. So here's the thing. The child they had instead of Lewis, Curtis, is like the perfect athlete and student. So it takes away what Ren and Donnie are and puts it into one child. So any accomplishment that Ren and Donnie have made at this point, like, is nothing. And they've lost whatever confidence they had. Because, like, one of the things about Donnie is he was the star athlete. He had all the trophies. Like, when Lewis was running around earlier, he kept, like, messing up Ren's room and Donnie's room. Knocking into stuff. Knocking everything over. Breaking stuff. Knocking over the trophy shelf. <laughs> yeah, knocking all the shelves off the wall. So everything comes tumbling down. And I have a question. I don't know. I never played sports. So I don't. I never had, like, trophies or anything. But, like, it's... Is that something that, like, you should be excited about and, like, keep, <laughs> like, like forever? Like, all of your trophies? on Like, all hundred trophies? Those are your accomplishments. I don't know, but I feel like he had them, like, since, like, I don't know, Pee Wee Lee or something. Because he literally had, like, I don't know, a hundred trophies in his room. I'm like, would you keep them all? Yes. I don't know. As I said, I've never been awarded a trophy. So. Never? No! What the fuck would I get a trophy for? You never played any kind of sport as a kid? I was in a bowling league once, and I never got a trophy, though. I wasn't that good at it. I, I, this is a time when not everybody got trophies. This is a time when you had to, like, actually be good to get a trophy. It wasn't like the, you just, you just show up, you get, like, I don't know, like a thanks for coming trophy. Okay. I, like, you never got any, like, for academics or anything like that? No, what kind of, like, rich school do you think I went to that <laughs> trophies for non-sports? You know, maybe I had like a ribbon. Maybe I had a ribbon for something, but I didn't like save it. I was like, oh, I think I left it at my desk. Oh, okay. And then, I don't know, like I threw it out like at the end of the year when I had to clean out my, my heaping pile of papers and all my doodles, my notebook doodles. I, I'm pretty sure in my storage unit, I still have like trophies from childhood. Uh, when you sort out your storage bin and you, uh, and you get your mink coat, I also want pics of your trophies. I want all your trophies. It's not a mink coat. It's fox. Oh, fox. Your fox coat. I want a, you know what? I want a picture of you with a fox coat holding up all your trophies. And <laughs> standing in front of a pile of all your VHS tapes. Oh my god. I'm putting on the 2021 vision board. I sound like a crazy lady when you describe me like that. All right. So in this new world, Donnie's greatest accomplishment was that he won the first grade spelling bee. That's like the only thing that... Um, yeah, I, like he won the first grade spelling bee. And like then Ren never got any accomplishments. Because I guess, like, I guess timeline wise, like that would be around the time Curtis would have started preschool or something and shown to be gifted or something maybe. And then crazy child took over the family is like, I need to study. So you all have to be quiet. And the family is like, the parents are quaking in fear of this little shit. I can see Curtis being, I don't know, like eight months and like already walking and talking for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> he probably read at a first grade level by the time he was like, I know, two. Yeah. So the family, the family's been living in fear. They've been tiptoeing around the house. I, it's like that, um, have you ever seen that episode of The Twilight Zone where you have that kid who was like a psychic and he can turn people into inanimate objects and stuff? I feel like it's like that kid. Yeah. Ren, like she pretends to go to bed. Like she like, I don't know, she like, says goodnight to the family and then she like closes the door. Well, she's like, I'm going to go do my homework. Bye. And like, she gets up into her room and like, it's decorated differently. She doesn't have all her, like, academic accomplishments up on the wall or anything. It's, like, leopard print bedding. And she goes to the window. She's, like, pulling on this ridiculous leather studded jacket. Uh, and she's, like, calling out the window. She's, like, hey, baby! And it's, like, this 25-year-old guy. Like, okay, so, if, which means, like, Ren is, like, 14 at this time. See, yeah, see, I was thinking, like, oh, like, Ren's probably, like, you know, like, 17 or something. And then I think I went on the Wikipedia page, and it was, like, Ren is, um, 
Like, Lewis's 14-year-old sister. I was like, what? And she's, like, hanging out with a guy in a motorcycle and sneaking out? Well, it's the classic, I'm trying to get attention from my parents, and nothing I do that is good enough, so I have to be bad to get attention kind of thing. Disney Channel's, I don't know, rendition of that is leopard print bedding and, like, a cool studded leather jacket. So you see, like, a biker chick wearing. But she's gonna sneak out to be with this guy. She kind of goes in, and she makes it look like she's gonna put on, like, her pajamas, and she just, like, throws on this cool jacket. <laughs> You're like, oh, she's a badass now. Okay, I get it. But then, like, before, because, like, Lewis is, like, in the room, but nobody can see him, and he's like, what the heck is happening? Yeah, because he's invisible. What is happening? He's, like, trying to talk to her. And then Donnie comes in with his little teeny tiny trophy. And he's all like, Ren, Ren. He's like all whiny and like needs attention. And Ren's the only one who will give it to him. Curtis comes in. He's like, will you guys be quiet? I'm trying to study. And Donnie starts like kind of rocking in his seat going, R-I-D, silent E, R-I-D, silent E. Because like that's ride is the word that won him the spelling bee. I've never had to say silent E in the spelling bee. And you know, I never even thought of it as being a silent E, to be honest with you. But I don't know. What do I know? I'm not a spell. I'm not a linguist. Is that? Yeah, linguist. Okay. Are we now at the point where Bubby Rose all of a sudden makes Lewis into a corporal being? Yeah, so uh, Bubby Rose goes and kisses Lewis on like the cheek or something. And like suddenly, like he exists. And Donnie and Ren are like, who the fuck are you? How the fuck did you get in here? Like, and he's like, oh, Lewis, uh, from out of town. I don't know. He comes up with some weird excuse. And they're just like, okay, random kid in a row. Yeah, before exchange student from Pennsylvania. They, they buy it, I guess. You know, just some, I don't know, kid just pops in when they turn around and he's there. Yeah. I think Curtis comes back in the room and yells at them again. And then, like, the parents intervene. Ren and uh, Donnie decide they have to, like, stand up for, like, what they want. So they, like, storm downstairs and they're like, Mom, Dad, we have a friend and we want him to stay for dinner. And they're like, you know how Curtis doesn't like people. I guess they're going to be having chicken that night for, for their mail or turkey. Yeah, I think it was a chicken, right? It was a chicken. Yeah, it's a chicken. It's a chicken. It's, it's like the full chicken. It's the full. Yeah, it's a full on chicken, but it's a big chicken. Yeah. You know what? Curtis has a lot of brains that he has to feed. He needs a lot of protein. For some reason, I don't know, this family has not laughed in, I don't know, 12 years because they're not allowed to. They're not allowed to make any noise at night. They're not allowed to have fun because Curtis is a monster. For some reason, Lewis picks up the chicken and just starts, I don't know, making it look like that it's dancing. And the family starts laughing at it. And then he puts it on his head like a hat for some reason. And he, they're doing like a chicken conga line throughout the house. And now you gotta wash the chicken. Ugh, this poor chicken. You know what? It's bad enough that he got slaughtered for food. Now he has to be on top of Shia LaBeouf's head, dancing around doing a conga line in the Stevens, uh, I don't know, dining room. Yeah. <laughs> and Curtis comes down, and he is furious. He is livid. He's pissed. Like, his eyes are red. He's, like, yelling. The house is shaking, kind of. It's, like, that kind of mojo. Yeah. That kind of energy. I guess Lewis stand, like, stand up to him. Is that the kind of... Sort of, like, the... I, I feel like the family usually, like, cowers down to him, but then, like, Lewis kind of intervenes. Yes, they're definitely... This family definitely cowers down to Curtis. Lewis gives them that extra push that they need to, you know, go against Curtis. Go against a child. <laughs> go against this evil child who's made your lives hell for the past, like, 12 years. He's like a succubus or something. I don't know. Because he's just so perfect. Curtis gets really jealous. I guess they, we get an establishing shot of the wallet earlier in the episode, and there's the Hanukkah money. The dad has the Hanukkah money. Oh, they, right. The Hanukkah money came yeah. from, like, family members, and the dad's like, I'll, I'll give it out afterwards. So Curtis puts it in Lewis's jacket and accuses him of stealing the Hanukkah money so that the family will turn on Lewis. I don't know. They tie him up. They say they're going to call the police. Lewis is, like, yelling to call on to Bubby Rose for help, but, you know, she don't come. She's gone. She bailed. All of a sudden, Lewis wakes up, and he's, like, laying in bed. He must have had, like, a horrible dream or something. I don't know. The family's like, oh, I'm so glad. I don't know why they, they went up and, like, really tried to wake Lewis up. Like, was he shouting in his sleep? Was he having, like, a night terror? Like, like what? Probably. He's probably making some kind of noise, and they're like, God, what the f hell is wrong with this kid now and they like woke him up and they're doing that thing like oh you know like sure you may have ruined um, hanukkah for us by destroying all of our presents but we forgive you i think you should come downstairs and um celebrate with us after all and then like it cuts over to them like playing dreidel which is like i feel like the only hanukkah -y type thing that actually happens in the episode yeah i kind of think so too and then um all of a sudden there's like a knock at the door mm -hmm. there's a knock at the door and it comes bubby rose and like one of those um 
one of those like '90s tracksuits that <laughs> um, I don't know, like elderly people in Florida would wear when it's like cooler than 70 degrees outside. Yes, one of those like full on tracksuits you'd always see like Jerry Seinfeld's parents wearing on Seinfeld or something. She comes in, she has a walker. And, like, inside the basket is all the presents. She's like, oh, I was just outside bringing my trash out. She's like, I saw this whole pile of stuff outside. I thought you guys would want it inside instead of outside. And they're like, oh, that's just our broken, um, I don't know, Spencer's gift tech. And then she's like, broken? What are you talking about? None of this is broken. Yeah, it's all it's all put together. Everything's in the way it should be. And they're like, it's a Hanukkah miracle. We got our presents. And all is fun and exciting. Everything's great. Bubby Rose kisses Lewis on the cheek again, and she disappears, <laughs> like vanishes. She just disappears, never to be seen again, never seen before. And then Lewis is like, oh, wow, great. How long till Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty much the episode. Uh, I, I had a, I had some issues with it, only because I, f- I feel like this was just became a Hanukkah episode by default, I, I feel like. Um, it just, it was kind of like, I felt like the script could have been... A birthday. It could have been just like anything. Like Lewis is looking for presents, and then he's like, "Oh, if I hadn't been born, you know what I mean?" It didn't. Yeah, it could have been anything. Like you get like this one part where like the mom is talking, like telling Ren and Donnie the story of Hanukkah. The very beginning of the episode. It's it's like a fifteen second scene. She gives a quick story about I don't know the oil was lit for eight nights, and that's the reason why they light the menorah every night for eight nights. I feel like I've gotten more details from the Rugrats over the years. Someone started to write a Christmas episode, and then I don't know. Someone on the staff was like, "Uh, Joe, they're a mixed faith family." I feel like it was Donna. I think it was Donna Pescal. I feel like she's like, "Nope, I'm Jew- Jewish. So let's make it Hanukkah." Maybe it was like at the table reading. They literally just went through with like a red pen and just crossed off Christmas and then just wrote Hanukkah in. Because, I mean, It's a Wonderful Life is a known Christmas movie. Yes, and we know how Kat feels about that. Even, like, the whole Lewis run around trying to find the presents, and even, like, that just had Christmas vibes to me for some reason. I I see, the thing is, we don't know for sure because we're not little Jewish kids. I feel like there's probably still the let's go find our presents kind of thing. That is true. But also for a 12-year-old to be doing it. Yeah, it's a little too... uh, Actually, I'm not going to lie. I might have still been doing it at 12 years old. (laughs) I just remember like all month of December creeping through the house, looking in all the spots and even going to my grandparents' house because then eventually my my parents would put presents there and I would like then creep through their house looking for the presents kind of thing. Well, because I was like thinking about this. It's like I was thinking maybe it's the kind of thing where you could um, maybe do the shopping throughout the holiday, depending on when it lands. I mean, but you know what? I don't really buy a lot of Christmas presents for people, so I don't really know how how it all works either. (laughs) I'm a one haul kind of person. I've been collecting stuff to make Christmas gift baskets for months, so. Uh, Oh, you make a basket. But just based from my like different beauty box and subscription box eyeshadow eyeshadow everybody gets eyeshadow you get you get the eyeshadow i don't want you get the eyeshadow i don't want all right how many greats in great grandmother would you give this episode on a scale of one out of five greats i'm gonna give it a two a two okay all right i see it i I respect i respect your two greats uh i'm gonna give it i'm gonna give it three greats i'm gonna i'm gonna go like right down the middle uh i mean it wasn't a horrible episode i you know i kind of enjoyed the episode it just loses points because I was expecting some, I don't know, Hanukkah fun. Because when I was, like, read a review of the episode in this, like, top ten list, they were just, like, applauding this episode as if it was this wonderful thing. And then after I watched it, I was like, eh, well, you know, it's, it was average, average at best. And then... I had to take a point away for the It's a Wonderful Life crap. Okay, yeah, I see it, I see it. And then I, um, then I found a blog from a few years ago, maybe, like, 2015 or something. Someone went back and, like, revisited this episode and they were just like wildly underwhelmed at how not much Hanukkah was involved in the episode. They kind of said that thing that you said, you know, the mom tells the story of Hanukkah. It was literally like a 15 second scene. Yeah. And then they just kind of threw the word out there here and there. I feel like I thought there was more to this and I'm just sad. That's really all I can say. You're like, we should have done the nanny. Yeah. But then I kind of feel like maybe that might have been just a little too in your face like i don't know if there's a happy medium like it is a late series nanny episode it's like the final season so you know not as good 
returns have been diminished greatly. We're way past the um the basics of the premise. We're way beyond that now. I wish there was more Hanukkah stories. You know what? Maybe next year we'll do the Rugrats episode. But I was like, eh, we could have done that, but we just did the Rugrats. Mm-hmm. That's why it wasn't even. But yeah, like when you gave me like two, I was like, really? Is that all there is? It's like those two and like what? Eight Crazy Nights? It was Eight Crazy Nights and then it was um episode of Saturday Night Live where Adam Sandler does the Hanukkah song and then I'm like, that's a song. There's just not a lot and it's a shame. Someone out there just needs to do a great Hanukkah episode. Come on, Goldbergs. You can deliver. But I feel like they might have done a Hanukkah episode to be like, not gonna lie. I mean, I know there's one where I think there is one where Beverly goes overboard with Hanukkah. I mean, technically the Goldbergs are still on the air. You know how we not we don't like to do things that are still on the air. Like, that's our stipulation. We've done it, like, once. Yeah, it didn't work out too well. Looking at you, Fuller House. Well, I hope you enjoyed our pop-up Hanukkah episode. Uh, join us next week when we go... I think we're doing Scrooge next. I, I don't know where this is gonna air. I don't know. We don't know where... We just popped this in yeah you know what we've already it, we've already recorded all of our holiday episodes for the year enjoy our like nearly three hour episode coming up probably the week of christmas <laughs> uh listen to cat and pat fight for like an hour of it i don't remember what over what but who knows we fight over everything uh enjoy actually you know what? i think we have like two episodes that nearly hit the three hour mark dude no wonder my voice was going out we did two movies we recorded them back to back over like a span of like two days. Yeah. And they're very long, very exciting. But they were, you know what? They were movies. So, you know, that's a hint. That's a hint of things to come. <laughs> and we haven't even done our Patreon episode yet for December. So I don't, I don't know. We got to find something. You know, what? maybe, maybe we'll find, maybe we'll, is there a, like, a Hanukkah movie out there? Besides A Crazy Night. Which I've never seen. Have you ever seen it? You've never seen it? No, is it any good? I mean, it's an Adam Sandler movie. So. You know what? Adam Sandler movies, they kind of go back and forth for me. Like, I love Billy Madison. I love Happy Gilmore. I love Big Daddy. But then there's, like, Jack and Jill. I was just telling my boyfriend last night that Big Daddy is my favorite Adam Sandler movie. Oh, it's it's great. It's a great movie. It's got heart. It's got soul. It's got Zack and Cody. I love it. And you know what? I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed uh, Adam Sandler's Halloween movie he did for Netflix. Oh, I miss that. You miss that? How? Every time I put Netflix on for like two weeks, it was this trailer for this movie right in my face. During the month of October, I was knee deep in in Peacock and watching all like the uh, monster classics, like the Universal Monsters movies, because they had like all that on there. And I was like, ooh, I'm going to watch all these. I'm going to catch them because I just feel like. They would have disappeared and I'd never find them again. Because <laughs> there were some deep cuts. There were some deep cuts on there for the Universal Monster movie. So I was like, I'll probably never see these again anywhere. And then when I dipped back into Netflix on like November 1st, I don't know, Jingle Jangle. I don't know. Heather told me I should watch that movie. And I'm just like, I hear the title and all I think is pixie sticks and drugs from Riverdale. I kept hearing about Jingle Jangle. And I was like, did... Um, I don't know, they do like a Riverdale made for TV movie for Netflix? Like, what? Is it like a fake documentary? It's, it's kind of like a Pablo Escobar type adventure, but that takes place in the Riverdale universe. Maybe like it's narrated. It's like Jughead doing a documentary, like a mockumentary in this world. Like, that's literally what I thought, because I'm like, Netflix did the chilling adventures of Sabrina. So I'm like, yeah, all right, maybe Greg Berlanti owes... Um, I don't know, Netflix, like, one more thing, and he just wanted to burn up his contract? Well, Riverdale is half-owned by Netflix, I believe. Yeah, you know what, they did Katie Keene for CW, and now they have to do something else, and Greg Brigalant, he's like, you know what, CW, were, they weren't really happy with this whole jingle jangle thing, so we'll just we'll just throw it to Netflix, because, you know, we can, get a, we can get a little, like, extra spicy on, on Netflix. So, apparently it's supposed to be so heartwarming family tale. Boy, was I off. <laughs> At least I figured this out before I started watching it. <laughs> <laughs> weird you're like i thought this was a mockumentary about the drugs on riverdale and it's a christmas movie i know it's like how i thought um euphoria was gonna be about the fake drug from metal to an o but no it's just some uh zendaya zendaya that's her name i was gonna say zoe de chanel but i knew it wasn't zoe de chanel but i knew it had to begin with a z you had zoe de chanel and zendaya confused. I knew it wasn't Zoe, Zoe De Chanel, but I knew it was a name that began with a Z. And the only other, the only name that I know is that begins with a Z is Zoe. 
So I was thinking maybe Zoe Kravitz, but I knew it wasn't Zoe Kravitz. Oh my god, Patrick. This is embarrassing. We have to go now. What's it about? Like, what is Euphoria even about? Do we... I don't know. I don't know. I don't watch stuff with Zendaya because I don't enjoy her. But you watch Spider-Man, though, right? Homecoming? And... But I don't enjoy Zendaya. I'm going to throw this out there. I watched Spider-Man Homecoming and I didn't really care for it. <laughs> I don't dig uh, Tom Holland as Spider-Man for some reason. Not for me. Far not. From Home is a better Spider-Man movie. Where, where can you watch it? What's it available on? I don't know. It's a Sony movie. I don't know. I don't know the stuff off the top of my head, Patrick. Does Sony have a streaming network? They should. You know what? Would you? What, what do you think Sony's streaming network would be called? Sony Vision? They're a bunch of assholes. I don't know. What would, what would be on it? Like, what is their, what is their um, TV library? I don't know. <laughs> Sony Plus. You know what? When you can't when you can't think of a name of a streaming network, you just put a plus symbol behind the name and voila. All right. Uh, where can you follow our Wild Ass Adventures guy, also the author? Where can you follow us? You can follow us on Twitter at Very Podcast. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr at A Very Special Podcast. Do not accept imitations. You can find us on like any streaming app possible. For for podcasts we've got a patreon please support us uh you have found us somehow please subscribe and all that good stuff and as always girl as always bye it is a rough road that lead to the heights of greatness